Hello and welcome back to the show. I'm Samantha Farlow with the Garrison Public Affairs Office. And I'm specialist Brianna Dew. Oh, no, wait. I'm not a specialist. <laughs> I'm Corporal Brianna wow. Dew now. It's still not said And I'm with the 1st Cavalry Division Band. Thank you. <laughs> welcome to the NCO call. <laughs> I am Army Sergeant Lamont Shavers, the Public Affairs NCO for the 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade. How the best ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this week we are talking with General White and Command Sergeant Major Burgoyne on holistic health and fitness and what that means for the Army as a whole when it comes to physical fitness and the fitness tests that you guys do. So very exciting stuff. For sure. Yeah. Huge, 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 huge paradigm shift in the Army just as far as how we think about soldiering and just how we think about PT, which is, you know, everybody's like, well, what's that? It's it's our exercise in the morning, right? But the new FM 7-22, what they spoke about, it's, it's huge because what it used to be a few years ago, that's not what it is now. It's night and day. It just doesn't talk about you're a soldier, you're going to ruck and you're going to run, you're going to be strong. Arr! It really gets into a lot of stuff like spiritual fitness, mental health, family. It's super dope. Yes, it is. So let's get to it. Welcome to Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Woo! Save money and get special military discounted tickets to your favorite attractions like Six Flags, Schlitterbahn, SeaWorld, Disney World, and more. Stop by our Leisure Travel Services office located right here on post to get those tickets. For more information, go to our website at hood.armymwr.com. Have fun! Welcome back, and we are welcoming our two guests today. We have the Fort Hood and Three Corps Commanding General, Lieutenant General Pat White, and the Command Sergeant Major Cliff Burgoyne. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show yeah. today. We are so thrilled Absolutely. to have you here. We're, back. we're thrilled to have Sergeant Shavers here. You can Shavers see here. the excitement <laughs> of Phantom 7. <laughs> well, we are here to talk about holistic health and what that means for the Army and for its soldiers um, I, as a civilian, uh, know nothing about really what you guys do when it comes to physical fitness tests or anything like that. My husband is active duty and my dad was active duty. So I have a very small amount of knowledge, um, but things have been changing. There has been a cultural change and a mindset change when it comes to what you guys are doing for the health of your soldiers. So w- what is, what is the change that's happening here? Well, um, you know, we could go all the way back to 2006, 2007 time frame uh, when we started to look at injuries uh, that soldiers coming into the Army were sustaining. And I think Lieutenant General Hurtling was the one that first started yeah. this uh, at uh, one of the commands, and he started to look at it. And there, there was a break uh, in the leg. It's called the femoral neck. And that really kind of uh, got us zeroed in on, okay, there's some bigger problems that we're having because a lot of soldiers were breaking the ball joint on top of the femur. And when that cracks, uh, th- there's not a replacement for it. Oh. And so we, we started to rethink how we, you know, do our physical fitness and so forth. To date now, I mean, that we're going, what, Louisiana math, 14 years now? Ish. Ish. Um you know, we're, we are changing the culture of physical fitness and uh, mental fitness, if you would call it, uh, in the Army. And you can st- see it starting to change uh, just by our daily activities in the morning from 6.30 to 7.30. But this is all about really from, from 6.30 till 6.30 the next morning. How do we go about living our life? Yeah, I think... Um... I mean, that's a great explanation. Uh, when General Hurtling was in trade Oc, he really used Fort Jackson as kind of the point to jump off. But if you think about the Army, right, um, everything is focused on the soldier. Right. And for years, we've invested in the most technological ranges, right, the getting new rifles, um, buying new tanks, all the stuff that's out there um, that we put a soldier in. Right. 
And what we haven't done is invested in the soldier. So if it's important that your rifle has the right repair parts on it and it works, maybe we ought to do the same thing for the human being. Uh, And so I think the institution is changing the culture. And I think it's important um, because we're only as strong as our weakest soldier. Absolutely. Right? And, And I know we say that often, but it's true. Uh, and I don't want to be on the battlefield with somebody that can't haul me off on a stretcher if I get injured. Of course, yeah. And so, again, so I think we're, we're changing the culture. we got to stay focused on the most important thing in the Army is the soldier. So let's take care of that soldier. Let's give it the soldier an appropriate way to be physically fit. Let's give a soldier a way to be most spiritually fit. Let's give a soldier a way to fuel him and herself properly. So you can endure. So I think what's happening and what our army is doing is exceptional. And it's really modeled after professional athletics and how they take on. They get their own nutritionists. They have their own physical therapists. They have their own training regimes um, because their body, right, is a temple and it's that important. And we're the same way as soldiers. Yeah. And and I think also uh, the army is a little bit different than every other professional sport because a professional sport, they have a calendar and they know exactly when they need to meet peak performance like football. It's on Sundays. Right. Absolutely. It's on Sundays. We, we don't know when that peak performance. So we've got to stay somewhere in a band of excellence where we don't get too high or don't get too low, but we've got to be ready. And, and you know, the, the commander has to deliver readiness and lethality. And, and if a soldier is not physically fit, they're not lethal and they're not ready. And so that, that's what we have to deliver. And I think the goal is to give commanders the tools to allow their soldiers to be the best they can be um, in this particular physical and mental fitness. And so part of it is uh, giving them the right equipment. Uh, part of it is... Uh, giving them master trainers. Part of it is training people that know what to look for to help you come up with a regime that will make us stronger individually and together. So again, I I think changing the culture going down this road uh, is exactly what we need today. Yeah. From a longevity standpoint, sir, there's no way I'd be sitting in this chair if I didn't change the way I did my physical fitness, and I changed in 2011 is when I made a conscious decision. Thanks on the part for other people that came, that came in and said, hey, you, you can't do that anymore. So I was running five days a week wow. for, for 20 <sighs> years. And if you look at the folks that, that, that were my leaders, I mean, I'm looking at them now, they can barely walk. It's because yeah. they were running for you know 30 years every single day. And it, you can't sustain that. And so... Uh, luckily somebody came to me and said, you need to change your workouts or you're not going to be able to walk when you're, when you're 55 or 60. And that's in about 10 years from now. Yeah. Or 20. <laughs> yeah. Like 10 for me. Yeah. I, and I think the other thing about, uh, fitness, right. Uh, is you do need cardio endurance for long deployments, uh, campaigns during war. You've got to right. be able to endure, but you also need sprint speed, hmm. right? You also need to be able to lift heavy objects, uh, you need to be able to get a tank crewman out of a tank by lifting with your shoulder. Like right. there Absolutely. are things we got to be able to yeah. do. And I think, you know, this change in our culture is appropriate for that. And, and all soldiers, I think general McConville, the chief of staff of the army, when he was visiting a couple of years ago, um, did PT with some soldiers out front. And he basically said, look, the enemy doesn't care if you're 17 or you're 60. Absolutely. Yeah. You so be you ready. better all be able to do. <laughs> yeah. That's why our, our fitness test is based on, you know, kind of the things that we all need, need to be able to do. So anyway. That's fantastic, sir. And honestly, to sum all of that up, I really believe that if anybody is attentive and they pay attention to kind of the paradigm shift that's been happening in the Army as a whole, not just with PT, but with putting people first, actually realizing that the old statement, mission first, people always, it's good. However, it can be improved upon. So now that we're really putting people first, we're making sure that soldiers and their families have time to recuperate properly, to get enough rest, to do PT in a new way that is actually based off of studies that 
have shown that, okay, in this war, this current campaign that we're in, these are the injuries that people are sustaining. These are the weaknesses that soldiers tend to have. So how do we strengthen that? How do we get soldiers that are broken after maybe 10 years? How do we get them to be able to finish their career? Because recruiters and drill sergeants will always tell you, when you leave the Army, the ideal is that you will be a better person, a better version of yourself than you can be. Mentally, yes, there are fantastic things that you get from the military. However, PT, it's the core of what every military that has been successful in the history of the world has done. The Romans, the Egyptians, etc. We, the United States military, specifically the United States Army, we are no different than them. We need to be able to take care of ourselves so that we can win wars, which is our primary duty to protect our nation, but also to protect ourselves from these injuries. So I just think it's very interesting that this paradigm shift has gone from focus on things like you said, tanks, we need more tanks, rifles, etc. Well, there's a soldier that operates this tank. There's a soldier that mans this rifle. If we take care of them and the rifle, then that sounds like a pretty good plan to me. But I actually have a question for you, Sergeant Major. Yes. What your does request? Sergeant Shavers? Ha- he's got like a he voice does. for radio. Like I'm, he was I'm going to lower us. my voice on my answers too. But that's awesome. I it, bought it on Amazon, sir. It's good, <laughs> sir. When I walked in, when, when I walked in, uh, the first thing I saw obviously was his mustache. I didn't see his rank or his name. And I looked at his mustache, and he said. How are you doing, Sergeant Major? Yeah. And I said, okay, I know why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> not because of the way you look. And it's the same thing for him, too. He's pointing at Dave in the, in the <laughs> studio for those who are not here. <laughs> A face for radio. So, as we know, deadlines are a massive thing in the Army. But there's a specific one that's very important to what we're talking about, and that's the 31 August deadline for the diagnostic scores for the Army Combat Fitness Test, commonly known as the ACFT. Can you kind of elaborate on that and why that is important, Sergeant Major? Well, it's, it's, uh, the reason why it's important is because it's data for learning versus data for inspection. So we're not doing it to turn something from red to green. We're doing it to learn from the numbers. Because, you know, um, think of this. You, you ever heard of the T-10 series parachute? I have not, Sergeant Major. Okay. T-10, they came out, and that was the nomenclature of the parachute. And then they improved it, and it became the T-10 Bravo. And then it became the T-10 Charlie, and then the T-10 Delta. And so we're going to improve the ACFT based on what our numbers are, data for learning. And so that's why we need all that data. Within the core, uh, we're at 51% as of last Friday of the 90,000 folks that have taken the ACFT. We're at 51%. And so last week we gained 6,000 ACFT scores, but we still have what? We got two months, and we have forty-five, roughly 45,000 soldiers that have to take the ACFT and put it into DTMS. It's a must because it's for learning. Could you explain what that acronym, the last one was? Sorry. It, well, Training management system. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I, it's, I don't it's know our, acronyms, so I... No, that's a great question. <laughs> got it. It's just... really what, uh, the, the system of record that shows everything that a soldier has done. Oh, okay. Rifle ranges, tank qualifications, um, classes, and in this case, the PT, the new PT test. Okay. Has to has to go in there or we can't see it. Gotcha. So. Thank you for explaining. For the record, I wasn't <laughs> supposed to use the acronyms, and they told me beforehand, but I just used one. Sorry. Because but I don't know what acronyms we got mean. An so, yeah, so it's good. it worked out great. Yeah. <laughs> I learned something new. Good, <laughs> but but anyway, that's the reason why we we need it uh, because the army is going to use that for learning. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. You are very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I also have another question for you, Sergeant Major. Yes, just... your mustache is in regulation. Yeah, it is in reg. It's awesome. <laughs> Anywho, so he also does voices. <laughs> as we know, with change comes new roles, responsibilities, new personnel, but specifically new personnel. Can you kind of talk about the new people that are going to be coming into units, coming on board that are going to assist soldiers with, with their 
training, such as physical trainers, weightlifting coaches, people of that sort. Can you kind of elaborate and tell us all why we're deciding to bring these types of people in? Um, it, it's more to get to an aim point of being specific, the paying attention to detail, the programming piece. Um, you know, our manuals tell us a lot of different things, but if that's your business, if that's your subject matter expert, uh, why not listen to them? I mean, you wouldn't ask me to fix your car. I know a little bit about a car, but you, if you, if you ask me to fix it, I'm going to break it. And so we're, we're, we're asking some folks that know a little bit more, uh, about physical fitness than, uh, our average person from Louisiana, which is not well educated. If you ask me. <laughs> Understood. So, oh, yeah, they are. so this goes, <laughs> yeah, other than me, right? <laughs> so this really hits on what you and the commander were saying that this really hits on what professional athletes do, what professional athletes get because they have their own nutritionist, they have their own workout plan that's catered specifically to them. For example, if you're a left guard in football, you're not going to be doing the same workouts that a wide receiver does. It's just not, it makes no sense. Now you will be doing the same things just like soldiers will. You will still fight on the same battlefield. You're still going to do PT in the morning. You're still going to go on your runs, the army combat fitness test, all that stuff. But when you do your own workouts on your own time, you can't do the same thing that I can do. I'm younger, but perhaps I have a shoulder issue. Maybe you don't. So each person needs their own workout plan. So I suppose that this just goes into that and really reinforces and knocks it home and tells soldiers that, hey, we're actually going to take care of you. We're going to ensure that you have your own plan for eating so that you can get your diet right, you can sleep right, you can also get your spiritual readiness right if that's something that you need. Yeah, I think um, describing the team you know, so there's clarity with that for the audience. You know, one one part of it is you, you will the teams are consist of a physical therapist, a dietitian as well. Um, we're incorporating our unit ministry teams up into these um, teams as well. The surgeon cell will be so your P at your physical. Um, I don't want to use an acronym. Sorry about that. Thank your you. physicians <laughs> assistants that are out there. So we're going to have a composite team that, that we can provide brigades. And then underneath that structure in the battalions are these master trainers. So the resources will reside. So a commander can, and a, and a sergeant major can dive into that team for the advice that you're describing. And then when they sense something is a little off kilter, right, they can take corrective action. So I think the composition of the team and bringing everybody together is part of the holistic nature of what we're trying to do um, here rather than I'm going to go to a physical therapist, but I'm not going to pay attention to what my diet is. My diet might be causing the problem I have physically, you know, and so this right. is, I think this is a great concept. I, I think it's resources and, and we as, as leaders provide uh, our company troop and bag with resources to be successful, to be lethal and to be ready. And it goes back to the old commercial of be all you can be. And we need to help each soldier be all they can be. Yeah, absolutely. And I know this podcast is coming out. Uh, it's been a while since we've had the best warrior competition here for, at Three Core, but I the, th the best warrior competition really kind of takes everything that we've talked about and and shows people being at their best and doing it correctly and and being the best. Um, so, it, do you guys want to touch on the best warrior competition that just that happened not that long ago? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we had uh, you know twenty two from. Uh, Across the po uh, across the installations of the three core, uh, they came here um, in uh, early July uh, to compete, and the the winners uh, both from three CR Third Cavalry Regiment here on post uh, are going to represent uh, our three core at uh, the Force Com competition that will kick off in August. Wonderful. Very impressive. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so do you guys have any final thoughts on anything that we've talked about? Anything you guys really want to share that we didn't touch on? Um, you can say no if you want to say no. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll defer my time to my colleague on the left. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I think, um, you know, just for those that are listening out there, I think we all have a personal responsibility to take care of ourselves, right? So if you're, if you're looking to somebody else to do that for you, then we can provide you what is generally known today as content. I can get you to a place where I've got the information or there's somebody there to help you. But in the end, you got to know yourself the best. You, right. you should understand and feel what's happening inside your body, up in your mind, uh, and seek assistance when you need assistance. But as a soldier, you have a responsibility, right, to be fit, to be disciplined. You got to know what uniform to be in. You got to know where to be, what time to be there. And you should generally know your purpose as a soldier. Right. And if we can all row like that together, then things like this holistic health fitness are going to just, you know, the output of that will be much, much greater than us having to pull people along into this. So I'm glad the Army's going down this road. Um, I remain, you know, honored to be able to command this Corps, my teammate to my right. Um, it's a privilege every day, and uh, and we like mixing it up out there too, um, at, you know, at a scaled level, obviously, right. depending <laughs> upon where, where you're at. Uh, and so thanks for, thanks for allowing us some time today to talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast today. It's been I know I learned a lot since I knew nothing going into this. <laughs> there you go. You learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> All right. Phantom Lethal. Phantom Warrior. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to leave your loved ones behind? Even large vehicles float, and overconfidence kills. For your own safety, don't drive into flood water. It's not worth it. Well, Lamont, you obviously are very thrilled about this topic. You really just seem to enjoy this. So Super thrilled. <laughs> so I'm going to ask a really, really silly question because hmm, we were with some very important people and I was a little embarrassed to ask the silly question as a civilian and someone who does not do any physical fitness <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> what exactly do you guys do for PT and for your tests that you have to take i know it's a dumb question but gotta ask well if you don't know then you don't know <laughs> so right. it's not dumb <laughs> so we do a lot of stuff for pt but it depends on what the unit is doing what the unit's training for gotcha. so instead of breaking it down we'll be here for half an hour talking about this and i'm sure somebody's gonna like <laughs> tear their ears out right <laughs> essentially you do pt so that you can strengthen and maintain what you have right right so you as a soldier, sailor, airman, marine, whatever service you're in, your PT is catered to what you're going to be doing in combat. Oh. So there's certain movements that you do during PT and you're like, yo, this is weird. But when you really look up the doctrine, why it was put in there, it's like, hey, this simulates when you pick somebody up that's injured on the battlefield. Mm. You do these runs because you need to have cardiovascular endurance during combat. Right. Like you just can't be super tall, super strong, but have no endurance because you'll be useless in combat. So that's why we do PT, right? Soldiers are supposed to be fit. I mean, right. If, if you don't have a fit force, then you're not going to be formidable in combat, point blank, period. But now our new PT test, which is the Army Combat Fitness Test, what we call it ACFT because we love acronyms, right? Yeah. So this new PT test, it's more focused on events that, again, you're going to be doing in combat. You carry a ammo cans all the time, downrange, combat, or just in a field environment. We have incorporated that into the ACFT, as well as a lot of the other events. Of course, the two-mile run is there. Everybody hates it, but <laughs> it is important. You do need that cardiovascular endurance, but it's really more focused on what we'll be doing in combat and how we get to be more effective soldiers, not just doing push-ups and sit-ups and doing a run, because that's really not doing a lot for us. So for the ACFT, there are six events, but for me, I can only do three because oh. I'm taking the alternate. Interesting. So, okay, so what are the six and the three that you can do? So the three that I can do is <laughs> the sprint drag carry, the running event, and there are alternates to the running. Okay. Um, if you can't do that. And then the uh, deadlift. Um, but okay. it depends on what your job is. Like Sergeant Shaver said, um, 
there's different categories. So if you're oh. in a, a, a heavier combat MOS, you will have to lift a little bit more than than right. myself, who's in the band. We're in um, um, the second category. So we're not in the lowest, but we're not in the highest. Um, and I forgot what the, do you remember what the colors associated with so them were? Because I can't remember them. That I don't recall. However, there are colors, but there's also names of the oh. categories as well. Okay. So you have moderate, you have significant, then you have oh, yeah. the heavy category. Oh, okay. So those combat MOSs that you were just talking about, that's the heavy category. So that's your field artillery, that's your infantry, et cetera. Then you go down to some MOSs like like yours, mm-hmm. my previous MOS, 92 Alpha, that's in that mid-range Mid category. Range. Uh-huh. Then the lowest one, it's not necessarily like, oh, these are the weak soldiers, but it's it's really MOS specific. So mm-hmm. my current MOS public affairs, I'm really not lifting tons of right. weight all the time anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, this is your category. <laughs> And, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the other three events include um, the leg tuck oh. or a plank if you cannot do the okay. leg tuck because uh, for a lot of women they're still struggling with yeah. the leg tuck um, because we just had we're just generally weaker in the upper body so okay. that's an official alternate event for now um, it's not expected to stay but that is what they're doing to just ensure that we don't lose a lot of female service right. members. Um, and then I believe, um, what was the other one? So you have your hand release oh, push-up. Oh, yeah, the hand release push-up. See, hand I release. don't do push-ups, so I forget <laughs> about that one. <laughs> and then you have your ball throw as well. So oh, your yes. So standing ball throw, which is, it's a very cool event, but if you never trained for it, it's, it's kind of awkward. So you get a medicine ball. It's mm-hmm going to be of a certain weight right and you get uh, you get practice throws and then you get two recorded throws and of your recorded throws whichever one goes the furthest and again just like you said each category has a certain distance that they have to meet and you just launch that ball behind you just (laughs) (laughs) wow that's it's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's very interesting because I, I always see people out there, always, you know, see people posting pictures on Instagram. Oh, we went out and did our PT. And I'm like, hmm, have fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like getting up early in the morning yeah. for it. That's probably my <laughs> no. least favorite part about the military is getting up super early. <laughs> but it's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I get up in the morning, just in my head, I just immediately hear, Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, get you out there going. <laughs> yeah, but I think the reason I'm so excited and just super pumped by the new changes to FM 7-22 is because it really goes into what the Army's trying to do, and that's put people first. Right. So how do we do that? We have to put their health first as well. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to ruck you un- until you die. I'm going to yeah. run you until you die. Now, old, old army, that was great. But then we started to see, wow, people are getting hurt and they're getting out earlier than they should. They want to make this a career or they want to stay in for 10 years or whatever. But they're consistently getting the same injuries over and over again. Why is this? Okay, maybe we shouldn't run five days a week. Maybe we should incorporate other things. Also, their family is, <clears throat> I don't know what just happened to that. <laughs> Ew, disgusting. <laughs> but their family is equally important to their physical health as well. Because right. if their family's struggling, they're not going to be as strong as, as they can be. Yes. If they're struggling spiritually, mentally, in any way, it's going to impact them as a soldier. Yeah. So this new update to FM 7-22, it's all-encompassing, really, to just make us healthier in all ways so that we can be effective here in garrison doing our jobs. And when we go out into theater, whether it's a combat deployment or just a deployment somewhere, so that we can effectively, as my command sergeant major so eloquently put it, because I love football, he said, we're going to suit up and we're going to play away games and we're going to win. Yeah, that's great. Honestly, I'm blown away at everything. I learned a lot today. (laughs) (laughs) I knew nothing at all before, and now I know so much. <laughs> so did this hit you like a like a big stack of bricks? It was just like, whoa. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not that bad. It's just yeah. a little It's a big adjustment. Baby yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's a really big adjustment from the fitness that 
the army has viewed for so long. Right. But I think it's a step in the right direction for sure, especially yeah. with, you know, the war is changing and the just the general force. Yeah. I mean, it's always changing. Yeah. And it will never stop changing. <laughs> so it always keeps you on your toes. Well, that's great. Well, I'm so thrilled that we talked about this today. I know I learned a lot. Hopefully our listeners have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts from anybody else? Well, um, <laughs> I'm going to give the old classic drink water mm, because yes. it's hot outside. Great tip. And, um, if I see you fall out, I mean, I'll try to carry you, but hey. <laughs> That's where not, that physical fitness comes you. in. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if it's at like the tail end of PT, I cannot help you at all. I mean, I'll call and I'll try to take care of you, but if you need me to carry you somewhere, hey. Not so much. I'll just look at you and smile. <laughs> smile and wave. That's that so moment. kind. Oh, yeah, of course. The thought counts, right? That's right. Okay, well, great tip. Drink lots of water. Everyone be sure to wear lots of sunscreen, hats. Be safe. Be smart. Um, thanks for tuning in to Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. Goodbye for now. This podcast is a U.S. Army Garrison Fort Hood and Fort Hood Public Affairs production. Hosted by Samantha Farlow, Sergeant Lamont Shavers, and Specialist Brianna Dew. The show's theme music is written and produced by Delicious All Stars. All our music is obtained royalty free through Filter by Song Trader. Have a question or want to share insights with us? Email us at forthoodpao at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at USAG Fort Hood. And be sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts.